Hi everyone, Karina here with Broken Ground, and today I've brought my friend Rachel S. Bjornsson here to talk to us a little bit about yoga poses for gardeners, in particular as they relate to back health. And the reason that I brought her on is because we talk a lot in permaculture about cultivating resilience, and we're usually talking in the context of on your land, by growing your own food, by improving your soil, uh, but we also want to think about cultivating resilience uh, with regards to our health. And we can of course do that by eating more nutritious food, but we also need to build the strength of our bodies in order to continue gardening uh, and in order to also be able to do this work over the long term. And I know for myself, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video is because as I get older, my low back seems to hurt more and more. And if I want to continue to do this work, if I want to continue to grow my own food, uh, I need to keep up on my body and take care of it. So Rachel, why don't we start out by you just having, telling us uh, who you are and what you do here. Yeah. Um, so I am a massage therapist and yoga instructor. I have a massage um, therapy practice called Reintegrative Massage here in Bozeman. And um, I also teach at Sacred Roots um, Massage School of Montana, um, which is a new school here in Bozeman. Um, and that's where we are today. Right, and it's um, a yeah, gorgeous a space. space. Um, and um, today we're just going to go over a sequence that can be really good to do before you start your gardening day mm -hmm. or at the end of the gardening day. It's going to focus on um, opening up the back body but also strengthening um, the core to support your back. And then the last pose in particular um, is really good for at the end of the day, just uh, restoring the body and helping your back soften up after a long day of gardening. Cool. Awesome. Great. Yeah, let's get started. Great. So we're going to start um, by first just tuning in with the breath. Um, yoga, part of the power of yoga is that you're breathing intentional breath into the postures, into the movement, um, or it would just be kind of fancy stretching and <laughs> exercises. So um, we're going to just tune into the breath first. Um, and traditionally, you breathe in and out your nose. So we're going to start to um, just drop the breath into the belly. So we're utilizing the diaphragm muscle and just breathing in and out the nose. And then the first pose we're going to come into is child's pose. And so with child's pose, um, bringing the knees uh, about max distance apart. If it feels comfortable for your low back, if not, you can bring your knees closer together. And we're going to first just extend length through the spine, utilizing the breath. So inhaling, breathing into the spine, and on the exhale, hinging at the hips, walking the fingertips forwards, and coming into child's pose. And so Child's pose is really good for just softening and lengthening out the body. So you can utilize the breath um, and a little bit of movement to just increase the stretch. So on an inhale, I'll have Kareem just walk her fingertips forward a little bit. And then on the exhale, she's going to drop her shoulders down. And really focusing on breathing into the back body. On the exhale, let the hips soften. This is also a really good hip opener. And so just hanging out here as long as it um, feels comfortable, um, but I'd recommend at least uh, five rounds of breath. And then from here, um, we're going to come up into tabletop position. So bringing the hands directly underneath the shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips, and just starting to warm up the spine and back body. So on the inhalation, tilt the tailbone up, and then vertebrae by vertebrae, move to look up at the ceiling, opening the chest, and then exhale, tuck the tailbone, vertebrae by vertebrae, move to tuck the chin. So inhale, tilting, opening chest, and then exhale, tucking. That feels so good. Yeah, it's really nice for just like warming things up, beginning of the day or end of the day. And then on the next exhalation, just coming back to tabletop, and we're going to just do um, some gentle core work just to warm up and strengthen the core. So coming back to tabletop position, 
And I really like to use my hands actually as a guide to check alignment in my body um, to just make sure I'm in space in a way that's supportive. Um, so from here, you're going to ground down first to begin through the right hand and then draw the navel in towards the spine and then bring that right leg up. And then bring the left hand to your hip points, just checking to make sure your hip is square. Check the low back, is it flat? And then keeping the navel drawing in, extend that left arm. Holding here for a few breaths and just breathing in um, to this line of energy from the left fingertips to the right heel. Am I pointing my toes? Or? Yep, that looks great, yeah. Pointing the toes. And then exhale, just release coming down. And we'll move to the other side. So really grounding down through that left hand. And then bring the left leg up. Bring the right hand to your hip points, just checking to make sure they're square. Draw that navel in. You can check the low back, make sure it's flat. And then extending that right arm forward. Yeah, and then again, just breathing into this line of energy from the right fingertips to the left heel. Holding for a few breaths, and then the exhale, dropping back. And that just really strengthens the core. So those yeah, are strengthening the core um, and the back as well. So in the core, a lot of times we think about as being the front of the body, but the core is really um, all the muscles that go into supporting your pelvis. So um, low back muscles, um, and actually from here we're going to move down um, to strengthen the low back a little bit more with some back extensions. So um, coming down all the way down to the mat, and then um, you're going to bring your forehead to the center of the mat, and then bring your hands to clasp at your low back. Um, and then draw your shoulder blades towards one another, shoulders away from your ears, and then squeeze your legs together here. So you get your adductor muscles on, which helps support the core. And then inhale here, and on your exhalation, start to lift up. And with this back bend, you're thinking more length than cranking into the low back. Am I lifting my forehead? Yep, that looks perfect, yep. Yeah, that's great. And then exhale, come down, rest your right ear on the mat, release the clasp of your hands. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale, let sigh out your mouth. And then bring your forehead back to the center of the mat. And then bring your hands to clasp again, but clasp the non-dominant way. So if you tend to bring your right pinky, um, bring over, bring the left over. So it'll feel like you're holding someone else's hand. Mm -hmm. And then draw your shoulder blades together, shoulders down away from your ears, activate your legs here, squeeze your legs together, draw your navel in towards your spine, and then on your next exhalation, lifting up and thinking length. So with each inhalation, think length through the spine and space, and if there's space, maybe you'll come up a little bit more. And so this is really strengthening the back body here. And then exhale, relax, bring your left ear to the mat, bring your arms to the sides, inhale here, and then exhale out the mouth, yeah. And then just press your way back up, and then we're going to cross ankles, come to sit. So with those, with any of these poses, are you doing, how many times are you doing them? Um, so it's going to depend on where your strength is already. I would say for extent, like those back extensions, trying to hold for at least three breaths to begin, but maybe, maybe working up to five. Um, and generally, yeah, just doing both sides can be good. Um, some people like to bring in some breath with movement where they'll come up and then come down, mm -hmm. where there's more movement and then there's like more of a static holding and both are great. So you just do it once on each side? Yeah, is, is yeah that's great for this sequence. But great. yeah, if you, you feel like with any of these poses, really like 
checking in with your body on what your body needs. So you might need to do a few more rounds of cat-cow um, some days, or you might even want to hold either cat or cow um, for a few breaths um, in one position just because it feels like that's what your back really needs that right. day. Yeah. Which I love that, again, that whole idea of yoga is tuning into what your body needs yeah. for that day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really, I mean, um, so body specific in what you've done each day. It right. changes. It's not, I never practice the same every single day cool. when I do my home practice. So, Great. Um, bringing your um, feet in front of you, we're just going to lower down onto the mat here and just do some more um, core strengthening. And I'm just going to turn to the side here so that you get um, a slightly different angle. Um, so, we're going to start here with just some gentle core engagement. It's going to be a little bit hard to see um, with. Uh, the camera, um, but I'll just describe what we're doing here. So, um, naturally, your low lumbar spine has some curvature and you want that, but for this particular um, core activation, you're actually going to flatten your low back out and you're going to draw your navel in. And so, just getting all the muscles right here turned on. And we're going to hold here for a few breaths, so even though we're engaging the core, continuing to breathe. And yeah, like trying to hold, you know, up to five breaths, ten breaths. And then releasing, letting that curvature in the low lumbar spine come back. And then bringing the knees up to about a 90 degree angle, a little bit less, and then bringing the hands to your thighs here. And so this is a bit of like an isometric, it's, again, you're not going to see a lot, but I'm going to describe what's happening. You're going to draw your navel in towards your spine, and you're going to bring your, press your quads into your hands as you're actually pressing your hands up your quads here. And a lot of times, when I start to turn these muscles on, I'll feel a little shake, that's normal. And trying to work up to a minute, two minutes. This is a great one if you don't have a lot of time, um, just to start your day out with, to get your core turned on so that supports your body as you move throughout your day and do gardening or whatever you're doing that day. And then coming down, releasing after you've held for a minute or two. Um, and then we're going to just bring in um, bridge pose. Um, so with bridge, um, one of the most important things is just to make sure your knees don't sway out to your sides. So your knees are lined up with your hips. And just checking um, for where you want your heels. You should be able to graze your he um, heels with your fingertips. And here, too, once you lift your hips up, you want your chin pointed up towards the ceiling, not looking to either side to support the neck. So on our next inhalation, we're going to lift the hips up. And you can stay here with your hands flat on the mat, or you can bring your hands to clasp underneath you and then roll onto one tricep and roll onto the other to get more of a chest opener here. And again, just holding here for five to 10 cycles of breath, continuing to breathe in and out the nose. And then slowly lowering all the way down onto the mat. And then we'll come into a gentle twist. So um, we've done a lot to uh, strengthen the core, back body, um, and now we're going to do a little bit of an opening pose here. So bring the arms to cactus arms, and then bring the knees up. And we're going to start by twisting over to the right, so dropping the knees over to the right. And if your knees don't come all the way um, over to the side, you can bring a pillow or a bolster or something or a block to support your knees. 
Um, and you can either keep your chin pointed up towards the ceiling or turn looking the opposite direction that your knees are twisting. And just breathing into this twist, just allowing some time and space for the back to unwind. A lot of times I feel a lot actually of opening happening through my chest and pecs as well. Out the arm, out the fingers. And then um, after you've held here for a few rounds of breath, coming back, draw your knees into your chest, give yourself a little squeeze, and then we'll move to the other side, so twisting towards the left. And you can play around with your arm placement, so sometimes people like to actually bring their arms more into a T, um, or coming into cactus arms, whichever feels most supportive and where you're getting the best stretch. And just continuing to breathe into where you're feeling the stretch. So for a few rounds. And once you feel like you've gotten enough softening and opening, coming back, drawing your knees into your chest, giving yourself a squeeze. And then just bring your hands to your knees and let's just take some small circles on the sacrum, which is that triangular shaped bone at the base of your spine. And then go the other way. And then bring the feet back down onto the mat. And then from here, we're going to go into a restorative posture. So I'm going to have um, Kareem just bring her mat to the wall. And this is um, one that I would just do, um, if you're going to do any of them and your low back mm -hmm. is feeling really fatigued after a day of gardening, is to do this one where you bring your legs up the wall for about five to 10 minutes. And so, um, yeah, so Kareem's kind of already moving there, but I'll have you, to get even closer to the wall, I'll actually have you bring your hip right up next to the wall. Oh. Awesome. And then you'll just sweep your legs up. So that gets your hips right up next to the wall. Yeah. Should I be even closer? Yeah, sometimes you have to scoot Scoo your bum. <laughs> <your bottom. laughs> and this is also a really good, kind of more gentle way to open up the hamstring and calf muscles as well. And so you want your feet um, like about hips distance apart. Sometimes people will come wider. Again, whatever feels most supportive. And we're going to be hanging out here, theoretically, for like five to ten minutes. Well, um, even though we won't do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have you watch us for five yeah. minutes in this pose. Um, but what's really great about um, this restorative posture is a few things. Um, as you lay here, you're going to feel your back just start to soften out. Um, your hip flexors in particular are this really important um, big hip flexor so as gets to go on slack here and gets to relax. Um, and so hanging out for five minutes allows the body that time to just soften. But also, um, when we're on our feet all day, you know, our circulation is really, a lot of it's like kind of cooling down towards our feet. So when we bring our legs up the wall, it allows our lymph and uh, blood circulation to have to kind of flow a little bit differently. And so um, it tends to be also just really calming for the nervous system. Um, it's energizing, but also calming. So it's restorative and that you should feel when you get up a little less fatigue. Um, and then so here, all your job to, is to like just breathe. And really just drop your breath into your belly. And just let the belly soften. And let the diaphragm muscle just do the work. Yeah, and so after being here for five, ten minutes, 
Um, just um, slowly make your way out. You can just kind of roll over to the side, press yourself up, and then um, classically with, um, I just say shuffle my way over yes. so I just gonna stay in the frame. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you're gonna come into Shavasana, so final resting pose is just coming onto your back and um, arms come out to about 45 degree angle, legs about the same. So if you're a little bit wider, that again is going to help that back body just soften. And here we don't pay attention to the breath. We actually just let the breath, well, we might pay attention to it, but we're not manipulating the breath. We're just going to let the breath come into its natural resting place. This is a pose that helps to integrate your mini practice here and um, rest is a huge piece of that. And so traditionally you're going to be in Shavasana for about eight minutes. And if your mind starts to wander, you're just going to bring it back to the breath, natural breath, and on exhalation to see if you can settle into your body more here. So just feeling the body supported by the earth. And with each exhalation, just softening a bit more. And a lot of times people will drift off during this period, and that's great. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've been in your classes very pure little light snoring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I guess if you if you had anything to recommend, ideally you're doing that at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. They've got because that that whole sequence wouldn't take you more than twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think 20, about yeah. 20 minutes when you bring in like a really nice legs up the wall and shavasana in there. But, you know, even just fitting in some of those, like getting that core engaged, getting some core activation, especially at the beginning of your day um, to support your back body um, and then the legs up, up the wall at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. And what I like about it is, again, it's again another reminder to me of the consistency. Consistency over time pays off. Mm -hmm. Just to be doing it more consistently, especially during the growing season, uh, will keep my body in a place where I won't get burned out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is pretty easy to do. Yeah, and I sometimes get stuck in that trap of like, oh, if I'm going to do yoga, it's going to be for an hour, sure. an hour and right. a half. And, um, and lately I've been trying to just bring in more of that like 15, 20 minute practice at the beginning of the day. Because um, I just saw a friend during travels and that's what she does. Like mm -hmm. for the last decade, she just does 15 or 20 minutes a day of just this gentle yoga practice and it's really helped her core stay strong, it's helped her back, um, and so just little, little right. <laughs> I feel better, consistent for shorter yeah. periods of time yeah. rather than yeah. just once a month. Yeah, yeah. And those like long right. classes are great. Like, yeah. you know, if you can fit in like an hour, hour and a half practice a few times a week, like of course you're gonna get some more benefit and strength from that. But yeah. just that daily practice is huge. Cool, yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. Definitely, Rachel is a wonderful massage therapist, so definitely check out her website. Uh, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll be sure to get those answered. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Rachel, for giving us some insight into how to keep ourselves healthy during the growing season. And we'll see you next time.